Hello everyone, welcome to the second lecture in the career planning series of Key Skills and Academic Support. If you've not already had a look at the lecture slides from last week, I strongly recommend that you do so before continuing with this lecture, as both lectures are strongly linked and this one will make a lot more sense if you have a look at the first week session first. What I hope to do in this session is to continue to support you in your career development and enable you to reflect upon your career journey to date and think about things that you might be interested in the future. I'm also going to hopefully support you in developing successful career management and planning strategies which you can actually use now in the first year of university. I'm going to share some of my own knowledge and experience around the career subject area and I continue to demonstrate why thinking about career is relevant to you guys now and I'm also going to provide some information about what you're going to be doing during this week's seminar. To give you a very brief recap on what we did last week, we discussed how the concept of the career has changed over time to reflect socio-economic, political and environmental changes in society and this included a brief discussion about some of the political or social policies that were introduced in the 70s and 80s, the changes in the welfare state, and changes in the role of women since the 1940s. We also discussed the idea that the career is now not considered an end point to reach after you finish education, but a journey that you're on now at the moment, um, and something that you can contribute to throughout university. We also discussed the various influences on individual experiences of the career. So we talked about structural factors or things within society that have an impact upon your career journey and some of the things that you can actually control as well, so the agency-led things too. We used the system theory framework map as a useful tool to analyse your own personal career journey. And that's something that we did or that we continue to do in the seminars too. What's really useful about this approach is that it recognises that structural factors do play a part in influencing your career, but that you do have agency, you can control certain factors or certain things about your career, and you can take action to improve your prospects. Last week, most of you used the system theory framework map to analyse your own career journey so far. And that should have been quite useful because you should have gained a greater understanding of your own position and the different um, influences on your career today, structural or otherwise. And you should also have a greater understanding of the different factors that may impact upon your career in the future. So if you think that gender or social class is something that has controlled some of your actions today, then having the knowledge about that will help you to either accept or challenge that idea and also take action. So, considering what I've said so far in this lecture and in last week's lecture, do you need a career plan? We've probably noticed, or you may have noticed, by taking part in the activities so far, your career is not usually linear. It doesn't have a starting point and an end point and it's not necessarily clearly planned either. It's unlikely that you know exactly what you want to do for the rest of your life and the idea that you will come to this conclusion whilst you're at university is perhaps a little unrealistic because as we discussed the concept of the career has changed. It's not as though you're going to be graduating and then starting in a career straight away from day one that you're going to continue in and enjoy until retirement. Because the choice of careers out there are really extensive and quite complex, choosing a specific career or even a starting place is very difficult indeed and it's not something that I would encourage you all to do. But what you can do is maximise your chances of securing an opportunity that takes you in a positive direction. And that's what this lecture is about. A structured or traditional career plan is one where you might suggest to yourself that you're going to become a police officer in five years' time and you will set yourself mini goals or 
goalposts goal along the way on that plan. Um, the problems with that are this is very definitive uh, and those goals that you set yourself are often inflexible. It prevents you from tuning in to different opportunities that might arise in your life so you become so focused on achieving this one goal that you miss out on a range of other things as well. And it's often tightly time bound too. So there's no flexibility. It doesn't allow for the things that naturally happen in life to be enjoyable anymore. And this can cause quite a lot of frustration and disappointment when those unrealistic goals are not met. So to summarise, do you actually need a career plan? And I would suggest the answer to this question is no. You don't need to have a structured traditional career plan that follows this very linear path. There are now some very different approaches to career planning and one of them that I really like and that, that I think can be applied to um, career planning at a student or graduate level is something that's called planned happenstance. Um, Dr. Kathleen Mitchell coined this term in 2003 when she wrote her book, The Unplanned Career. It's an excellent book and it provides lots of useful tips and hints as to how to actually use this approach in your career planning. Uh, so I'd recommend that you have a look at that book, definitely. Um, but what she suggests is that there are thousands of possible career opportunities out there, um, including in the criminal justice field, and so we can't really be so rigid with our career planning. We can't actually use the traditional career plan to help us with our career aims. This approach also recognises that there are different influences upon the career um, and it recognises the changes in society, so the socio-economic, political and environmental changes we, we discussed last week. Kathleen Mitchell also understands the career as a lifelong experience, so it's again not something that finishes or starts and is linear but it's something that we continually add to throughout our life. And here are a couple of quotes from this book I thought summed up what planned happenstance actually means in practice. The first one, we need a plan to act on happenstance to transform unplanned events into career opportunity. And planned happenstance is both attitudes that you gain and actions you take. It is the view that you can create opportunities by taking action on your curiosity and on chance events. I've also included a link here to Catherine Mitchell's website if you want to read a little bit more about the plan Pakistan approach. It's really crucial that you understand that it's not just about luck. It's not suggesting that the career is something that will just happen to you but it is an approach to life that should be conscious and purposeful and definitely an ongoing process. So what does that mean in practice? Well Kathleen Mitchell is suggesting that life and careers are messy things and that this is ex both expected and positive. So the idea is that you have to think of indecision, so not knowing what you're going to do for the rest of your life whilst you're in level 4 at university. Thinking of that is not actually a, a problem to be remedied, but it's a really useful state because you're able to um, take advantage of some of the opportunities that are available to you and to get involved in a range of different things that you would other, otherwise not consider. In practice, this approach also means that you need to develop a strong awareness what is actually available to you whilst you're at university. So there are several different opportunities that you can get involved in, from volunteering to placement to study abroad, part-time work, and I'll cover some of these things later on in the lecture. But it's about developing proper awareness of these things so that you're able to get involved in things that you might actually be interested in and might need opportunities for your career. It's also about being visible. So 
actually getting involved in different activities means that more people know who you are, they know what your interests are, they've got some kind of record of what you might like to do and they'll and, and those people will actually think of you when, when opportunities arise. And this also might include being visible online, so having an online professional presence on social media networks like LinkedIn is a really good idea and that would actually help you to take on a planned happenstance approach to career planning. Kathleen Mitchell also acknowledges that it is normal, inevitable and desirable for unplanned events to influence your career. So that might mean attending a talk with the Hallam Criminological Society on an unplanned basis um, might actually give you a little bit more information about uh, a certain role within the criminal justice sector and this might spark your interest in that area and therefore lead to different opportunities that you can then get involved in. So this approach is really about getting involved in things that you would perhaps previously not have considered and finding out more information about a variety of different possibilities and opportunities that you would otherwise perhaps not attend. So we've talked a little bit about what planned happenstance actually means and what activities that might involve, but how do you actually implement this type of a career plan? And that's what this slide is all about. So the first point here is about clarifying your ideas. So that might mean trying to think about what your current interests are, trying to analyse some of your own skills, thinking about what your values and ethical ideas are. It's then about removing the block. So instead of thinking, I can't do this because, or this isn't possible for me because, start to think of ways around those blocks ways of doing things that you may not have considered before. It's also about expecting the unexpected. So that attending things, engaging with things and finding out information about things that you would otherwise not have engaged with. Uh, so that might be attending a one day conference about policing or it might be attending um, a volunteering event or a law career fair. So this stage is really about putting yourself into positions so that you can take advantage of the different opportunities that might arise out of those activities. So this last stage is about taking action. So if you've attended a volunteer fair and you have spoken to representatives of a charitable organisation who are interested in new volunteers and you have the time for volunteering, then the next stage is really about making contact with that charitable organisation or company so that you can actually take part in the volunteering. So that covers the whole process from clarifying your ideas to removing the blocks expecting the unexpected and finally taking action on that initial process. But there are definitely some key characteristics or behaviours that will help you to use the planned happenstance approach. And initially that means being curious. So it's about finding out what the different opportunities are, both at Sheffield Hallam University and in the external environment. It's about being optimistic and persistent, so you have to understand that not everything you try um, will be a success. You won't be able to get involved in absolutely every opportunity, but you need to be persistent with your approach. You also need to be flexible to be able to um, change your ideas about what you might like to do and to get involved in, in a range of different activities at different points in time. It's also about the ability to take risks too because you'll need to attend things or get engaged with things that might be a little bit daunting at first so you need to be willing to take those risks. So that's a very brief overview of the 
process and the key behaviours required to take a planned happenstance approach.